So welcome everybody, it's Helping Hands here bringing you your patch note analysis of the Coral Viper update, it's, uh, patch 1.6. And uh, yeah, we're going to be jumping straight into it. We, we already kind of know what's um, what, what's featuring in, in the patch, and this is more of me going over the notes and like giving my thoughts and feedback on uh, certain changes into the balance. Uh, but we'll briefly go over um, what kind of new features and content there are in the patch. So first up we have battle groups, we've got the British Australian Defence Battle Group. This is featuring things like the new mechanic of the uh, supply trucks. So if you're familiar with like the caravans in Age of Empires, uh, where you've got a caravan from a marketplace, you take it to another marketplace, it picks up some, some goods and drops it back. Um, basically, that kind of mechanic is now in Company Heroes 3 for the first time ever with this truck. So this will go to like a supply point, grab the supply, and then drive it back and then give you a big bank of resources. Uh, pretty cool mechanic there. Uh, also, things like the Australian Light Infantry section. Uh, kind of maybe a little bit more of a long range specialist type thing, the little two pound anti tank gun. You got like defensive tactics as well there with bow fours, um, as well as in, in place 17 pounders. Um, hold the line, which is a new type of brace. Um, you've got uh, the archer tank destroyer as well in that, um, in this battle group, which is, uh, you know, goes actually faster in reverse than it goes forward. Um, quite squishy, but that, you know. Glass cannon type unit, you know, very good, packs a punch, but uh, quite vulnerable for being flanked and things like that. All right, so that's the the, the Aussies uh, for the um, for the Brits there. So we're now on to the uh, the deck. So the deck's got an espionage battle group, which is quite cool. You got the um, the Funk Panzer wagon. This thing can lay, um, I think, Teller mines and standard shoe mines, and also it can lay uh, Goliaths. You can use uh, so Goliaths back in the game, which is sick. And it also acts like it provides like camouflage bonuses to nearby infantry, which is pretty sick. Got the anti tank um, uh, incendiary munitions, so this will this is a new ability in company heroes as well. So when it fires off a shot, um, it will damage the enemy vehicle that is hit, but it also do a little bit of extra damage over time. But it won't uh, do enough to kill the vehicle outright with that extra bit of damage. But you know it's just a bit of extra damage there, which is kind of nice. Um, you've got advanced tactics, ambush tactics, uh, training, and then you've got uh, Operation Scorpion. Scorpion is a bit of an iffy ability, as we'll be testing this later on. It's an ability that allows um, your vehicles to become camouflaged. Um, so, so one of my top comments on my, my recent video was, I uh, didn't know the DAC had developed Klingon technology, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. But yeah, you can now, when spending the munitions on this ability, your, um, your tanks will go invisible. Uh, camouflage and uh, they, they, their movement speed will be re um, reduced, but when they start firing out from camouflage, they'll fire a bit faster. This seems to be incredibly strong, probably a bit broken, you know, just on first kind of look at, look into the, the ability when I saw it being displayed in the, um, the preview, but I guess we'll see how it goes. On the right side of the tree, we've got um, diff two different types of beacons. One is a disruption beacon, and the other one is a subterfuge beacon. If I remember right, one was one um, siphons off resources. The other one spots enemies through the fog of war, which is quite nice. Then you've got plunder, which is a really cool thing. Where, so any kind of destroyed vehicle you go up to, you salvage it, and you'll get a cool weapon um, of an appropriate type for the unit that, pick, that picked it up. Um, transfer depots, that allows you to get more resources of certain kinds when you build that on certain... Um, resource points. Uh, then we've got Firestorm, so off-bat Firestorm ability, it's a barrage, and then you've got the disruption, disruption uh, operation. Uh, oh, there you go, that's it better. Um, this, this is a really interesting new ability in Company Heroes, never seen this before. Basically, you drop this on a certain area, and enemies in the area, their line of sight gets reduced gradually over a certain, certain amount of time, making it so that you can uh, ambush them and come up on them uh, from multiple flanks without your opponent maybe noticing it until too late, which is really interesting. Also, I think it reduces the enemy's accuracy as well, something like that. I will, again, we'll, we'll be doing loads of this testing later on. So that's the deck. So three new maps as well, one for 2v2, one for 3v3, one for 4v4. Einhoven, um, kind of a cool 2v2 map by Spanky that's come back and re envisioned for Company Heroes 3, which is pretty sick. Gothic Line and Oasis Depot. I've actually play tested these maps, early versions of them in the past. Um, so from what I've experienced past, they were pretty good and they've received kind of like some fine tuning and additions there, which I'm super excited about these ones coming in as well. It's great having more maps as well. Accolades is a cool new system. Um, brand new feature that adds uh, dedicated faction progression and offer rewards and completion. So at first look, I thought this was like uh, the masteries in uh, similar to Age of Empires 4. And... Um, you know, in, in in Age of Empires 4, you would do like certain challenges and that, and then you'd get like cool, maybe like a title or badge or something when you did it. So that's kind of cool. Um, hopefully they expand on this and add more type of progression. So this is the idea of it is adding some progression. 
Um, and they're also going to add some other challenges and stuff down the line as well, hopefully. So yeah, titles, badges, banners, and merit. Love this. Hopefully, they'll maybe include this to add skins as well um, down the line. And hopefully, they'll, they'll expand upon that. Uh, mission select. So for you guys who like the campaign, uh, this allows you to individually select what, any, any kind of mission you want without having to go through and play all the campaign again, which is cool. Uh, and there's also carp versus AI difficulty, difficulty selection. So if you like comp stop, you can actually choose the, the type of AI difficulty that you get. Vote to surrender. Something we had in company here is too. We can now have vote to surrender again. Also... Um, there is now people getting, um, penalized. First time ever in Company Heroes, you get penalized if you leave a match too early. I think at the start with it's like 10 minutes, you, you'll have them call, all match cooldowns, things like that. So, uh, make sure, um, to not just rage quit out of a game. You have to, uh, issue a vote of surrender. But if you're playing a 1v1, if you just type in slash L, like you would normally do, it just, put, uh, surrender you. So you haven't got to worry about accidentally leaving game if you type slash L. But and also, even in team games, writing slash L will all just, will start a surrender vote anyway. So that's cool. There you go. Uh, end game flow. Oh yeah. So now um, at the end of the game as well, uh, you're not instantly taken out of the match and thrown into the post-match analysis, uh, you know, stat screen. You can now actually go back to the match. Everything will be paused, and you can take in the match and analyze the match and see where your units are. See, you know, your unit kill counts and stuff as well. So that's what you know. Previous and company heroes we had both in one and two. We finally got that back, which is quite nice. So if you'd like to check the map, map. Out after the uh, the match is finished, you can do now. Also, AI has been improved apparently, so there we go. Also, um, pathfinding has been improved as well from what I've had for light vehicles, so that's just another one there. Um, so different, yeah, a little bit of difference to challenges. They've uh, so for, for for the merit system and challenges, they've made it so you, you know, they've added one dedicated challenge now for single player. However, to make up for the loss of a, a multiplayer one, they've added more merit on the two ones that you would get for multiplayer so it kind of balances it out so you know overall if you do all of them you get actually more merit than you know if you ha had not done them at all um color decal setting this is an interesting one um so you can now actually turn all the decal colors off so the things look a bit more realistic which is cool i guess we'll show that showcase that later as well um pathfinding yeah there's retail uh, pathfinding just mentioned q capture orders Altered the behavior of queued capture orders so that a squad no longer automatically leaves a capture point when it is contested by an enemy. This means that queuing up multiple capture orders will force the, the unit to wait until they finish capturing the point before moving to the next target, instead of leaving when enemies walk into the area. Okay. Some, apparently some UI improvements as well. There we go. Single player UI improvements. Italian campaigns. We'll just go over that. Okay, some bug fixes. I'm just going to have a quick break, read through this just to see if I notice anything that I think is important. Bring up. Mm. Okay, well, I'm good, you know, just some fixes there. Unit attack behavior. We change, change their attack behavior. This should make players feel like units go idle less often for reasons they weren't aware of improving on the unit attack behavior seen in previous titles. Units had an attack order on target that got destroyed but got idle. Attack order on target that got destroyed, it will go to the maximum weapon range of the last seen location. Okay, cool. Weapon upgrade refunds, alter the way partial weapon upgrade refunds work. They will no longer allow you to do partial upgrades due to selecting multiple squads with different uh, inventory capacities. Okay, okay, okay a squad will issue 50% refund of the value upgrade, that's good. Right, multiplayer plans. Here's what we wanted to look at. Let's do it. Okay. Experience rewarded against veteran units. Damaging or killing veteran units will reward more experience. We want players to have the opportunity to catch up as lower veteran rank units generally struggle more uh, than they should against enemies on high veterancy levels. Bonus experience reward per kill. Ooh. So this kind of reminds me back of like i get well i guess in company heroes one when when like uh, for instance if you killed the king tiger in company heroes one right with like a rifleman squad and you got the final like you got the sticky um bomb on the, the king tiger and you got the kill with it that rifle would instantly get vet three even if they were a vanilla rifleman so this seems to kind of bring back a bit from the old company heroes one days where you know killing you know stronger uh units yields more, more veterancy uh, but this is more to do with the, how much more veterans that unit has. So that's like, kind of cool, though. So if you've got like a low level, you know, unit, um, you know, and there's a very weak veteran C3, 
you know, enemy vehicle that you might want to kill or something, try and kill it with that um, the, the the under veteran squad. So let's say if you've got a vet one's one and you've got a vet three one, let the vet one get the kill because they're the ones that are going to get the you know the benefit more from that experience, right? Um, right, heavy machine guns. We are tuning up the suppression of heavy machine guns to shorten the amount of time it takes for a unit to become pinned. Too, too long for units to become pinned while in the open. The number of counters to heavy machine guns has increased over multiple patches. Okay, so it looks like all machine guns across the board have received more suppression. Okay. Um, high combat bonus. Hey, Dragon, thank you very much for 19 months, buddy. I might just turn off my uh, stream notes here because this video is going to go on YouTube later. So sorry, anyone watching YouTube that saw that. Well, thanks, Dragon. Right, height comment bonus. Height comment bonus is no longer the gate cover as it made high ground multi level garrisons too powerful and ignored one of the major mechanics of heroes. However, we are increasing the accuracy bonus provided to still be meaningful. Height bonus no longer ignores the cover of the opponent. Height bonus accuracy is increased. 10 to 25. This is a huge one, actually. This has been a huge... So, look, so yeah, you're still going to get... the. But now, yeah, because you used to be... Let's say if you're in sandbags and you're in a, and a person was in a, in a building, right? The top level of a building. Um, those sandbags would not benefit you at all. And you'd be you, you'd still be treated like you're in negative cover due to the unit being in, in like the fifth floor of a building, right? But now, you'd still you'll now benefit back from that from that cover... But the unit that's in the building will just have a bit better accuracy. So th this is actually really huge. Um, damn. Okay. Wow. Yeah, the multi-level garrisons. Okay, that's definitely that's a huge, huge change there that they didn't really mention at all in their previous streams. But that that is massive. Well, bonuses to cover give me. It's just like you you take less damage. Um, you know, <clears throat> you know. So there was negative cover, uh, no cover, light cover, which is like yellowy orange, and then you've got green cover, right? So light, medium mortars. Uh, mortars were doing too much damage in a short period of time, which made it difficult to use units like heavy machine guns. Damage reduced. This is good change. I always thought, yeah, mortars at the moment have been very, very powerful and too strong. So this is nice that actually they're nerfing them a little bit. To make it too easy just to get a cheap mortar out and just to bombard and clear, you know, destroy units and machine guns. This, is, this seems to be a good buff the machine guns, this patch. Mines were too efficient at killing uh, unit models and infantry squads. We're reducing this to better affect the cost effectiveness of mines to prevent mines being able to one shot certain squads like the Pioneer or Scout. Unit model damage limit increased decreased from 3 to 2. So mines have been a little bit nerfed. Recovery is becoming slightly. It's becoming significantly fast. Faster, but in exchange, slightly more expensive. It covers vehicles in a more vulnerable state. Health, restore upon recovery, changed from 25 to 10%. Resources required for recovery have been reduced by another 10%. Vehicle recovery time sped up for the light vehicles. Okay, nice, nice. Heavy vehicles are now need 55 seconds to recover. The wrecks have been increased a bit more as well, so it'll take another couple of shots maybe to actually get rid of them. But this is quite... This also buffs up. The uh, the new espionage DAT commander as well. This 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 fact here because it just makes it easier for you to to actually benefit fit from the Rex because the Rex will probably stick around for longer because they have that increased hell. So that's actually you know buffing up the uh, the espionage plunder ability, which is quite nice. But this is good. Like you didn't you know recovery hasn't been a mainstay of Company Heroes Three at the moment, even though there has been you know you got the recovery tractor type thing for the uh, the DAC, and then the Americans have got their their cool in vehicle as well. But it's nice to see that, you know, they're trying to encourage more pe people to do, you know, utilize this ability. Which is cool. Sweet. Right. <sighs> Sandbags. Update is out. Thank you very much. Let me get that going straight away. Is it updating? Let me, um, uh, yep. Can't update Q. Update. 1.3 gigabytes. Right, right. Hopefully that won't kill the stream. Let's keep going. Uh, right, sandbags are receiving a significant increase in their build times as it was too easy to lay down heavy cover even when the sandbag was under fire. Sandbag build time standardized to 10 seconds. Wow. And the coastals have even, yeah, uh, from 1.5 to 8. Dude, okay, this is huge. I would be okay with this if the sandbags were a bit bigger than they are currently. The sandbag, like, the... the, the, the 
the size of the current sandbag can maybe fit maybe one or two men on it, right? When most squad sizes are much bigger than that. So that's insane. There's going to be a lot less sandbags around on the map. That, this is absolutely massive. Wow, that's a huge... Like, double the amount of time now, and quadruple the amount of time for the the poor uh, coastal, coastal reserves. I wonder if that's, you know, is that the same thing for mines for them as well? Because they used to build mines very quickly as well. Makes the new Aussie ones even better. Yeah, if they, it depends on how long they take to build. Makes cover more valuable. Yeah, you did see it spam quite a lot. So, yeah, I do agree that... I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And then you accidentally destroy them with a vehicle. Yeah, it's not, not very easy to, to to run over your own cover, especially in, like, team games when you're just microing into the front line. You might run over someone's cover. And... Mm. Right. On to snipers. Reducing the cost, increasing the health of snipers to make these investments less risky due to the numerous counters... Available to the various factions in the form of light vehicles. Health has been increased by 20, and the manpower cost has been decreased by 40. Ooh, okay. Because, you know, I've been saying for a while that snipers in Company of Heroes 3 just don't see them off them at all, because it's not worth going. Because there's you know, so many light vehicles on the field that can harass them. Um, so this actually might encourage people maybe to get a sniper or two out during a match now, which is interesting. And, oh yeah, the mortar's got nerfed as well, which means the sniper's more likely to survive, um, you know, the, the occasional mortar... Uh, barrage so yeah pretty good for snipers stealth detection we're giving players more options to deal with camouflage units by designating proper detection units and adding detection to most vision based abilities factions will have access to both infantry vehicles uh, infantry and vehicle based detectors <coughs> that are able to spot camouflage units from a greater distance however detector units will not be able to spot up to their maximum sight range this allows camouflage units some chance to avoid detectors and make use of their advantage so here we go so this is, they've done all this just to account for the new uh, camouflage on the, um, the the espionage commander, basically, now. Um, but yeah, so we've got the Dingo, Humber, infantry sections upgraded, the recce package all have the detection now, US forces, the uh, the Jeep, um, scouts. Is this, it doesn't say weasel here, so maybe that won't be it, but scouts are the various path, on, yeah. The crap motorcycle team, uh, the Cronson's tractor, and the Panzer Pioneers all have decent. And then the Kitten Crad, the 221, and Pioneers. Okay. Techs uh, enemies up to their full sight range. That's good now. So this seems to be spot, you know, so flares. I guess that'll spot snipers maybe now. You know, even commanders that might be hiding. <clears throat> General protection range increased from 10. To 12.5 recon planes detect enemies up to their full sight range of recruiting loiters enemies within the loiter area cool so a lot looks like quite a few more ways to spot um camouflage units right sticky bombs anti-tank grenades and panzerfaust we want infantry to be better at zoning out vehicles and preventing units like anti-tank guns from being overrun so reducing the number of infantry based snares it takes to slow and destroy vehicles furthermore veterancy will play a more important part Keeping these abilities relevant at the later stages of the game through increased power. This change is being made so it is harder to overwhelm anti-tank defences with vehicles and prevents opponents from immediately ending the game by ki killing dedicated anti-vehicle units and then overrunning the rest of the opponent's army. Damage increased from 110 to 120 for anti-tank grenades and sticky bombs. A veteran Z2, Panzerfaust anti-tank grenades deal an extra 40 damage. Sticky bombs speeds gone up as well, so they get them off faster. And coast reserves is not affected. Okay, so the coast reserves still was meh. So they didn't get a buff. Right. That's interesting. I think, you know, making them do more damage, the higher veterans see the uh, the units have is quite nice, actually. I like that. Okay. Uh, all mobile medium anti tank guns wind down time is decreased by a little bit, giving anti tank guns a slight boost in effectiveness by increasing the rate of fire. Again, this is gonna it says it says all mobile medium, so it's not the new two pounder. The new two pounder has got its own specific fire rate, which is very fast, but that's cool. Ultra light uh, ultra light vehicle machine guns. We're reducing reload times for several light vehicles to match their weapon cooldowns. This is changes to limit situations where vehicles take significantly longer to fire their next burst. Oh, this is good. Yes, the um, the crash and shoots and always took forever to fire after a one burst. So that's nice. It seems to be well, the 250 as well. Big time, you know, gone down there as well. Okay, nice. 
Vehicle load times. The time it takes to load infantry into transports. Not tank riding. No longer scales with the size of the squad. This will speed up loading infantry transports. No non-tank riding vehicle load time standard standardized. Just for five seconds. Okay, okay, cool. Right, on to the specific faction balance. US forces. Right, let, please be something about their demos here. We're shifting the power of US forces center. Support center to create better gameplay diversity where the infantry support center focuses on infantry units and the manpower economy. Mechanized support center has access to much stronger vehicles and repairs, and the air support center provides powerful abilities to support the existing army. We have also added a new upgrade to improve bazookas that allows us to make changes to reduce the power of the M18 Hellcat and the Sherman Bulldozer combo. Okay, sounds like they've done a big overhaul on this. Um, so the MSC has received significant changes in previous. We want the support center to be the ideal tech decision for American players who want to focus their plans on vehicle gameplay. The new mechanized support center no longer gives its, ba gives its base repair, but instead has a new ability in the form of designate forward repair station, which moves the repair outside the base onto capture points on the map. This adds flexibility to fit it into various strategies, but also add a... Um, its effectiveness across smaller and larger game modes. That's a good. I like this. The upgrade within Mechanized Support Center has been overhauled to give more meaningful upgrade. So yeah, this that's great because like, it's so annoying and chawsome to bring a vehicle all the way back to your base to get that repair off. Having it as like a forward, I don't know. Is, is it just the one that you could have, or is it multiple respect stations? Seems like maybe only just the one, but I guess we'll have to see. Um. Okay. The aura has been improved, replaced by a new faction building unlocked with Mechanized Support Center purchased. It's one time and movable, right? Okay. What if it, does it have a cost to keep putting on new points? It's free the first time in 100, but uh, okay, cool. Interesting, interesting. Spawns are a repair engineer's squad on the territory point that heals nearby vehicles at one time. One at a time, okay. Per second, engineers do not fight in combat. When used on additional territory points after points, the engineer score will disappear and a new score will appear. Yeah. If it decaps territory point, the ability of the engineers will be removed. This ability cannot be used on territory points marked with forward pressings by other players. First use is free. Okay, yeah. As you guys said in chat. Gotcha. Specialized munitions change to realm retrofit. Uh, we are Packaging the old smokescreen ability with specialized missions so Americans only need to purchase a single upgrade to unlock all abilities related to their vehicles. Cost increase from 100 man pounds 20 fuel to 150 to 30 to account for that. Upgrades is the following Greyhound, looks cash shot and smoke shot abilities. Okay, that's good. So this seems a big nice buff to this. Uh, most people always pick the infantry support, so not the mechanized ones. So this would be, you know, I think more people might pick this now. Um... Sherman's conversion has been reduced by 25. Improvised armor, cost increased. Yeah, the armor cost armor is being slightly increased to better affect the benefits it provides to American vehicles. Okay, a little nerf there. Uh, rapid repair replaces smoke screen. Because the so smoke screen's been added, you know, combined to another bridge. So this is a brand new ability. Cost 120 manpower, 25 fuel, increases the repair speed of all US. Forces repair units, including for the repair depot by three health per second, removes the manpower cost to designate for a repair station. Oh, so then you can just pop it wherever you want for free afterwards. Right, okay, that's nice. Cool, cool. Right. The infantry support center. We're moving the captain into a more supportive role and adjusting the cost of the two other upgrades. These changes are intended to move infantry support center from being an all-round all tech decision to being a more specific of supporting heavy investment into infantry. When we, uh, so on the captain, we are removing one of the retinue members of the captain squad to further emphasize the captain role as a support unit rather than as a combat unit. In return, the squad now has a veteran that better reflects the squad's support role and relies on its own, on its abilities to be effective. Okay, 150 member when rebuilt. Mark, uh, mark target range has been increased. Slight veteran squads have been reduced. So, changes to following. Hard to hit. Ability recharges. Okay. We are reducing the member costs, but increasing the fuel to better reflect the identities upgrades. So it's gone up by 20 fuel, but 100 manpower cheaper. The same as well, another extra 20 fuel, interesting. Okay. Nothing about the mine stuff I'm noticing. I feel like the mines could be planted and demos could be planted with all the units with that infantry support center. So the weapons support center, so new upgrade, improved rockets. We want American players to be able to use bazooka teams and elite infantry in the late game. 
While the bazooka is a potent threat in the early game, it does not deal enough damage to heavier vehicles. Yeah, for sure. Uh, to allow for infantry-based strategies based on the bazooka to scale le uh, better, we are giving US forces players an option to invest into bazookas at similar cost to bars found in the barracks. Increase the damage of infantry bazookas by 33%, but it costs more. This is a nice change. I like, yeah, this is great because bazookas become irrelevant after a certain point, and hopefully this will make them more relevant. This also will probably buff ranger bazookas as well, right? Yeah, I'll say exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, the rangers with bazooka. If you got, you know, you go in for the ranger, you know, and you get like a six man ranger that's got all bazookas. How how good is that going to be? Jesus, I guess that's something that we can test. <clears throat> Um, hang on. So yeah, we. I need to probably write that down. Or something. So I remember to test that. Uh, bazooka. Hang on. Bazooka. Upgrade test. Test on rangers because that seems very strong. Oh yeah, and then you've got uh, exactly. Yeah, Lammy says don't forget the um, the SSFF units as well as pa um, pa para bazookas. Pa para, yeah. Paratroop bazooka dudes as well. They are all going to get buffed as well, yeah, potentially. So, yeah, actually, yeah, I guess we could test them all. I'm pretty sure SFF, SFF and uh, paratrooper ones probably do about the same amount of damage, right? Rangers, because they, they'll have two bazookas each, right? The paratroopers and SF, SFF. But rangers can only have, well, rangers can have six, right? MG got, yeah, it was also a yeah, point. There's the MG can also pin uh, units faster, all, all MGs as well. Um, so on Sherman smoke launchers, the angle of the Sherman smoke launcher has been adjusted so the projectile arrives faster and looks less jarring when it's launched the tank. Okay. Uh, on to the Hellcat. The current Hellcat is too in, uh, efficient when dealing with more expensive vehicles in a head on fight. This chain, the change is meant to focus. Hellcat as an anti-armored vehicle that uses its speed to disengage or maneuver after getting an accurate high damaging shot off. Flanking speed is also being locked behind an upgrade as we want the Mechan support centers to be the primary way for the US access vehicle abilities. Long range actuary has been increased slightly. Its reload time has, its reload time has been increased. It's slower to reload. Now unlocks flanking speed when rearm and refit is upgraded. Flanky speed is no longer available by default. Okay, so I would say it's a nerf to the Hellcat then. Yep. Bulldozer is having its speed reduced to better differentiate the unit as a slower moving breakthrough tank. Cost has also been increased due to its high infantry firepower, increased health and heavy front armor, which is superior to that of the standard M4A1 Sherman. So cost has gone up by 20 manpower and 10 fuel, and its speed's gone down. Okay, so it's just a flat nerf there to the to the bulldozer. I, I did think it was a bit too good, but okay. That's fine, I think. The Stair Bazooka team, the white phosphorus smoke uh, has been adjusted to be less lethal, giving enemies more time to leave the smoke and still be combat capable. Um, okay, so it's gone down by three damage per tick, which is kind of nice. Explosive damage removed as well, so it's not going to get the extra explosive damage off. It was quite strong to just find an enemy machine gun team or find a group of a bunch of enemies Yeet that in and then it'll do quite a lot of damage. So there's a bit of a nerf to it. There's one of the few reasons why you'd get a bazooka team is because of this that like white boss smoke was quite strong. But now it's kind of nerfed. But as bazookas are now more relevant with the 33% extra damage, you know, by later on, I think you still might see them. So SF commandos, due to their high, high command power, uh, command point and manpower cost, the anti infantry power of the SF commando is below where we want it to be. Improvements are targeting their mid-range effectiveness to further reinforce their combat effective range. So the M1941 Johnson LMG accuracy has been increased. And their cooldown has been decreased. Okay, so it looks like a straight buff to them. Those, those guys, nice. Rangers. The damage bonus efficiency 3 made rangers too powerful with certain weapons. We're changing their damage bonus to an accuracy bonus. Rangers will still be very powerful units by the late game due to their high... Accuracy provided by veterancy and their innate twenty percent accuracy bonus or weapons. Okay, so it says they got a thirty three percent damage bonus as what they used to have. So the, the so with the new bazooka change, it will be like they were beforehand because they lost the thirty three here, but then they regained. You know, if they have got bazookas, they'll, they'll have regained it 
due to the the bazooka you know if you get the bazooka upgrade from the weapon support center so that's interesting and they're also just gonna be a lot more accurate as well which is yeah that's good so you, cool But that, but that, that, that is a veteran C3, though, I have to add. Not, you know, when they take a while to maybe get a ranger squad a veteran C3. So I guess we'll have to see. Uh, US forces, infantry, artillery, beacon. All beacons are receiving an armor reduction, making them easy to be destroyed. Yeah, they did feel like they took a little bit too long to kill. We will now be all attacked by nearby enemies. Cool. Uh, the Scot. We want the Scot to be better at attacking defensive structures directly. Bunker Bus has also been changed to be a long-range pressure tool that is very effective at striking placements without endangering the Scot. Standard attack and barrage damage penalty against a place bug is removed. Bunker Buster range has been increased by 25. Uh, Bunker Buster damage increase, uh, decreased from 133, though. The recharge time has been reduced by 20. Angle scab, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it has, an has a munitions cost now. Hmm, okay. I guess we'll have to see how that feels. Uh, the Stan Sherman. Uh, manpower costs have been reduced by 20. Okay. Um, the 75mm half track. Longer accuracy has been increased, so it can better tackle light vehicles, so buff to that. Mortar pits have had a significant health decrease. They were very strong, and their inventory cry has been increased as well. So this is nice, because I did see a lot of people spamming mortar pits, so this is a good change here. Nerf to the mortar pit. Now on to the US Forces battle groups. Airborne carpet bombing run. Manpower cost has been increased by 20, but the strip between planes has been reduced. Increasing the grouping of the planes. So it's going to be more accurate, basically, the barrage of that. Arrival time has sped up as well of the P-47 rocket run. And the anti infantry loiter has been increased by 10 munitions, and the command point has been increased by 1. Uh, the Sherman Whizbang production unlock. We are continuing the process of adding alternatives to call-ins, allowing players who purchase their tech buildings to have a cheaper point option and easy access to specific units. Added as a as competing choice, the Sherman Whizbang allowing the Sherman Whizbang to be purchased from the tank depot does not have... Okay, so it's like the Panthers change as well now, so you can actually make the Whizbang from your tech depot. That's cool. Like that. You might be able to get it out sooner because of that, hopefully. Uh, right, on to the Brits. So, um... We should chase the British forces. We're only doing some minor adjustments to the Brits, right? So Churchill, I always thought the Churchill Black Prince was pretty crap, to be honest. And the change here is it's just had some more armor, okay? That wasn't its issue. For me, it was maybe too slow and too inaccurate, to be honest. But I guess it's t it's going to be more tankier from the front, all right? The uh, CMP truck, uh, Polston and Medic upgrades in Arakai, the platoon command post. Okay, yeah, because you go for the four-point switch one, then immediately get the med medical thing out, right? Or go for the, uh, the the AA variant on it. Okay. Fair enough, I'd say. Not too bad there. Machine gun nest now available built by Royal Engineers. Add a machine gun nest to British force facts to give them some light defense that can be built to lock down areas against... What, just as standard? That's kind of nice. Oh, okay, all right. Brits can now build little uh, machine gun bunkers. Hey. Uh, I thought this would have been tied to the uh, the new commander. Um, for the... Uh, Brit for the Brits, the Aussie boys, but uh, it seems to be a, it's just a standard thing now by the looks of it. Cool. Um, we'll be getting into the patch and testing it very shortly, guys. I'm just going through the patch notes uh, as quickly as I can here. The Humber was getting infantry too fast. Uh, it's good. anti infantry damage allowed it. Right, so let's just reduce the requirements there. Oh, sorry, I'm rather increased it, I should say. It takes it longer to get more veterancy. The grant has been increased from 125. Okay, so just 10 extra fuel to get the grant. Matilda. I'm um, slightly reduced to better reflect its cost. Yeah, it was a bit too good, I think, Matilda. Okay, so it's quite a significant decrease in its front and side armor there. Um, the Senate Churchill, from cooling unit to production unlock that is available for the command lock, does not cost my command points. The cost is set to forge, a man pound 10 fuel, infantry, support, smoke, no longer lock behind veteran C1. Right, so you actually now need to build tech before you can get the church. It did seem, yeah, it was, yeah, of all the kind of call-ins, it did pretty goddamn strong to call that out without having to build your company command post. Right, onto the DAC. Right. The standard 2.5 tr truck can now convert into medical trucks for a cost of 50 munitions. Hey, that's good. So this is the, um, I imagine this, so this is the truck that you can tow the 88 with, right? So you can now convert it into a medical truck later on in the game, which is quite nice. 
Though I don't know if it'll lose its ability to tow. I know the current CMP truck, the, the medical variant, can still tow stuff, I think. Does it, does, does the, and I, I don't think the medical truck could tow stuff, so I need, I need to, um, well, again, I need to test that, but hopefully that, they might fix it so the, the, the medical truck, the Apple Blitz medical truck that you get for the, uh, the DAC can actually tow stuff. Right, arm reserves. We are further adjusting arm reserves by adjusting prices. We are making most of the callings cheap on manpower as Africorp struggles for this resource in the late game rather than fuel. We're also giving the Tiger a substantial cost reduction as is a major risk for the Africorps to reach the Tiger and then purchase it. There will still be a major opportunity window for players to punish rushing for a Tiger without preparing counters in advance. Okay. So the stock three pounds and four pounds of three armor reserve call in. Manpower cost reduced by a hundred. Um, pounds of four stock call fuel cost will be on up by just ten. On up by ten. Tiger tank has been reduced by 100 manpower and 60 fuel. That's a significant amount. Wow, we might see tigers more often now. That's a really significant change there. Always felt like it always took too long to, you know, even now it's it still felt like too long to get a tiger out. But and the tiger is very good. The DAC, like in terms of like tigers over the you know, of company heroes history, the DAC tiger is a very good one. Uh, but again, it's only one tank and, you know, loiters and big, big dives and stuff or where it hits a mine and you know, can still cr cripple it. So we'll, we'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll have to see if this might make it make you know, tiger spam. Well, I, not tiger spam, but you know what I mean? You'll see, you'll see the tigers more often, but will it be fairer for the allied players? I guess we'll see. So assault grenadiers, due to the early timing, reducing the health of assault grenadiers to make it easier for players to force back squads with small arms. They gain their plus 10 health eventually too. So they get it back. The health has been decreased. Yeah, mm. We've also increased the speed penalty in technical sort to make it harder chasing enemy units and dodging coming grenades. Okay. So Askren's just nerfed, to be honest. Uh, Bursa Gleary are continuing to have their prize reduced to match their combat power, make it easier to obtain bread and light machine guns. I've not been making them at all lately, personally. Uh, our tent has been... To deeper a review of combiners battle group as with other battle groups. However, for the time being, we are increasing the base price of base power basically unit as we continue with work. So they're 20 manpower cheaper, and their machine guns are 10 munitions. Okay. Might make make it worth going for now. Pans of three whole machine guns. Pans three whole machine gun tracking is closer to those used by allies and access vehicles. Whole machine gun tracking left to right. Okay, so seems better. As a commander, we're reducing the cost of the F-Course fire tier structure. 100 manpower cheaper, 20 fuel cheaper. Once the constructor give the player an option to rush for heavier unit. I mean, yeah, you've got the 88, the Panzer three, and the Stuka. I feel like the Stuka's in a weird spot because, like, it's so expensive to go for your, your final tier structure just to go for a Stuka. And now I guess it's twenty. It, it, just because it's twenty fuel cheap, I still probably won't going to go for. I'm probably going to still just go for DAC tractors for my indirect fire over going for something like the Stuka. It's just so much cheaper to just to get it out of your your tier three rather than your tier four. But I guess you know if you want to go for you get, maybe get the eighty eight or something else, good. But I guess that's just general buff. But okay. So Panzer Jaegers, these changes like the speed of the second further volleys. Okay, so they just nerfed the. Uh, they did buff the the AT rifles on these guys. It seems like they've nerfed him now. Reinforcement cost has been increased by four manpower, and their population cap's gone up. Survival packages, smoke launchers now cost 25 munitions per use. Was free. For now it's actually 25 munitions. Okay. I always thought it was strange that it was free. That is a huge change. That is a pretty that is a massive change, to be honest. Is that other units? Is that other, you know because I know other factions have got smoke, you know abilities. Are they? It sounds like they're still going to be free. While uh, for DAC now they cost something. That doesn't seem that fair to be honest. I feel like if they're going to make a munitions cost to, to smoke, you know, like Panzer Tactician and all those kind of things, it feels like every faction should be able to do that. Because you still got to buy this from the armory, the survival package of smoke launchers for two hundred manpower. Hmm. 
Smoke for other factions is uh, is usually unit specific. Dak had it for everything. It did, yeah. My, pretty much every vehicle had the smoke, which is got, well, yeah, which is very strong. Twenty five missions is not much, but it will mean that they will be penalized. I I always did feel like having a free like get out of jail free card like that without having being penalized for it was was silly. So you know it's not going to cost you something, right? Right, we're on to the, uh, okay, so we're, we're, uh, the Walker Stuka, they, okay, it's been reduced, so, okay, a little buff to the Stuka. Right, on to the Wehrmacht, uh, we are targeting seven Wehrmacht units, let's do Officer Quarters, we are making the Officer Quarters affect Battle Group units. Previously, the Wehrmacht was the only faction whose upgrades did not synergize with their Battle Groups. This should open new strategies where researching Officer Quarters is a viable path for improving Battle Group units. Infantry Company now affects the full scrim pyos, artillery officer, and the coastal reserves. Oh, baby. That's nice. I'd like my I like my artillery officer and coastal reserves. So going for that, and it buffs them up. And also, if you like your full pyos, um, you can do that as well. You know, they can get vet one as well with that. So that's pretty damn sick. And then the Panzer Grenadine Luftwaffe Company affects the Stug D, the eight red, full shimmigas as well, Wesps, Panzer Ford Command Tank, LG4088. Damn, that's pretty sick. Tiger, Panther, and the Obichi as well. Cool, cool, nice. Right, Panzer Commander. Oh, Command. Uh, we're reducing the fuel cost of the Panzer Command. So 20 fuel cheaper. Pioneer. Pioneer Squad has... The, the, oh, they're a bit faster to recap. Slightly faster. Grenadiers. We're improving the grenad uh, performance of Grenadiers at short range to make charging Grenadiers more difficult in the early game. But improving their scaling into the later stage of the game with veterancy along with significant boost their support abilities. Oh, nice. Area effect with healing will allow grenade, veteran grenadiers to keep other units on, on the field while improving Panzer Faust range will make it higher for vehicles to purge from the lines. The color accuracy has been increased. Reduced the cost by five on the, on the Panzer Faust. Uh, increases the range. Of the Panzer Files when they get more veterancy, medical kits change to area effect heal. Nice. So this is basically the same thing that the British Tommy sections had in Company Heroes 2. You pop the ability on, every squad nearby will get will benefit from that healing. This is gonna make me actually like Grens. I despise Grenadiers at the moment in Company Heroes 3, but this actually might make them more enjoyable. Especially now with the getting the, you know, they got still got the MP40 package and it's now been reduced by five munitions as well, which is cool. So Grens actually might be worth like going with and sticking with now. We'll see. You know. Nice. I'll have to, I'll have to give them a go. And they'll still have, like, you know, weapon slots as well. So they might be able to pick things up off the ground and stuff. I still just try to remember, does any accessibility... There's no accessibility that drops weapons on the ground for, for units that is there at the moment. But it would be nice if there, if there, was, if there ever was to come with something like that. Grens and, like, any kind of, like, squad that doesn't automatically have any, like, weapons would make them really strong. Maybe we might see something like that down the line. Uh, anyway, uh, Panzer Grenadiers. We are getting a gentle increase of lethality at medium range. Okay, this year mid range is doing increase. Bundle grenade with damage increased as well. Capture rate has been increased significantly as well. So Panzer Grenadiers get a nice buff. Okay, the not the Nebels fire damage no longer stacks. Units in multiple flame patches of the Nebel worker will only be damaged by one. Okay, slight nerf, something. You know, I still feel like, you know, Nebels are still going to be really good. I guess this, they've done this specifically for the British emplacements, I feel like, especially like the 17-pounder. They probably fired, because how the 17-pounder is massive, right? And I imagine multiple rockets will probably hit a 17-pounder from a single barrage of a Nebel. So this is making so that if one hits it, only, so multiple hit, only one of the flame stacks will, will apply. So this is making it so that Nebel weapons aren't so crazy good against, I guess, emplacements. But I still feel like they're maybe a bit too good. But again, well, it's, it's a slight nerf. We'll see. Right, the Stug G assault gun is having its reload speed and penetration improved, allowing the Stug to better come back all very uh, vehicle types. So the reload speed has been reduced. Penetration has been increased. Air effects. Okay, load and decrease as well. Load its anti infantry performance. Well, I already thought the, the standard Stug D already had a really terrible infantry performance. So I don't know why... Okay. Anyway, right, Jaegers. The accuracy of uh, Jaegers has been increased. So, what's it, low? So, yeah, mid and long range is much better now. Most people just go for the uh, the Shrek up ones, but this actually makes them much better, you know, 
you know, with the with the G, G43, so it makes it more appealing to go for the G43s now. They still get their flare, so that you know that's always a good ability to have. Uh, the Werble Wind area effect model damage reduced from three to two, so it's going to make it less lethal against bunched up blobs and stuff. Two to one has been increased, takes longer to get veterancy. Stoss Strupen manpower costs have been decreased significantly by forty, and their pop up cap has gone down as well. Panzer fours are cheaper by 20 manpower, and their reload speed has been reduced as well by quite a, a lot. Okay, Panzer fours. I thought they were already in a nice spot, Panzer fours. But I guess they're, they've been buffed. Okay. Um, Tiger heavy tank. Tigers, the front armor has been increased. Affects the DAC one as well. So front llama has been increased massively up to 380 as well. So that's going to make them much, much less to get penetrated by, uh, by by certain things, which is cool. So, so buff, big buffs to the tiger, especially the Dak Tiger by the sounds of it, since it's now cheaper and stuff and you can get it out quicker. The Panther, we are slightly increasing the Panther's rate of fire to be better attacking armored vehicles. So now it has, a, um, has, has been buffed. Short sure, reload time. So the Vermont Battle Group's a breakthrough. We have doubled the duration of breakthrough to now play significantly more time to raid and security territory. Literally completely doubled. That's cool. Right, Coastal Reserves. Here we go. With the change in the officer quarters upgrade, we're increasing the vegetable requirements to Coastal Reserves. We have also reduced the build time bonus to make construction longer. Okay, so it's going to take longer, much longer to build mines. We already know it's going to take a long time to build sandbags now as well. I think it's not going to be a huge no. I think you'll still be able to spam as many mines down as you want, but you'll you'll uh, won't be able to do it as quickly as you want you know want to do it as you had done before. Sign is it how significant is the veterancy requirements? Uh, a little bit. We'll see. Defensive line, the vehicle repair and healing physical line reduce the versatility of this ability to force coastal player to either build more support bunkers, no longer repairs. Vehicles or heals infantry. Munitions cost reduced to 75 to 70. So what's the point of going for that ability now? I mean, I never normally went for this ability anyway. I always went for the bunkers. But like... What's the point of going for that ability now? I'm just, I thought the only thing you do it for was, he, was the heals. Was it just a slight reduction in damage? Yeah, I think this is a bit too extreme. Okay, uh, but yeah, I don't think I don't think people will use it now if it no longer does that. Right, the mechanized assault, stoss path threat, command point reduction is reduced. You can take faster smoke launches from raid. Cod now, okay, so also they cost munitions now. The regal now properly causes heavy engine damage. Good, and the eighty eights emplacements have been reduced by sixty manpower. That's significant, right? Bugs. All right. I guess we'll uh, we'll just we'll probably won't read every single bug fix there, but we'll have to just see if it's fixed in the game. But if you guys you know have watched the YouTube video, you can pause it and read it through your own time. Also, I'll post the link to the uh, the patch notes in the YouTube video later on as well, guys. But there you guys go. All right. So guys, that's the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and want more content, check up over here and over here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the button down here. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon.